the Carolina Raptor Center, and she will be doing a presentation on vultures. And I think I mentioned this already um, throughout the talk. If you do have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. We would like for everyone to um, leave their microphones muted just so that there's no confusion on who's talking or um, no background noise. But you can turn on your cameras if you'd like. We'd love to see your faces. Um, so we know we're not just talking to the wind. Uh, but if you are eating and you want to leave your camera off or laying in bed or whatever, that's OK, too. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started, Audrey. I love it. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm actually really excited to join you guys. Um, I'm getting a little more used to this whole virtual meeting situation, um, and I'm actually quite enjoying it. One thing, the downfall is that I'm not in a room with you is that, um, you know, I, I can't ask you random questions and have you just shout the answers back at me. So the chat feature is extremely important tonight um, because like I said earlier, I don't want to talk at you. I want to talk with you. So as we go along, please throw comments, throw questions up in the chat. Brianna is actually going to be the one that relays those to me. Um, and, and that way we'll get to have a conversation about vultures. So what I'm going to do right now is we practice this and we'll see if I can actually do it again um, as well as I did before. I'm going to share my screen um, because I created a PowerPoint because let's be honest, you would rather see pictures of the birds than pictures of me or just a video of my face. Um, so here we go. Um, Brianna, can you guys see this, vultures? Oh, yes, no. Oh my God. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that. I'm like, whoa, did I cut you off? Okay. <laughs> Still here. Can you see the vultures? Yes, we can see the vultures. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Fabulous. So, one of the reasons I'm so excited to talk with you tonight is because literally we're going to talk about one of my all time favorite things on the planet, and that would be vultures. So, I should probably clarify that I work at the Carolina Raptor Center. We do not work with dinosaurs there, we work with birds. Um, so, raptors are a category of bird, they are birds of prey, they're apex predators. So, these are the birds that hunt other animals to eat. Most of them have unique characteristics that um, it's how you tell raptors apart from other birds. Um, and mainly what you want to look for is they've got great eyesight. Most of them have that curved, sharp beak. They've got really strong feet and sharp nails called talons. And they use those adaptations, again, to catch other animals. So I, I'm fortunate enough, I get to work with things like eagles, owls, hawks and falcons and vultures as well um so to get you started there's a picture of me on one of my happiest days at work with a baby vulture on my desk um i'll talk a little bit more about our training methods later but i want you to remember this picture and how happy i am because y'all how many of you really get to like hang out with baby vultures while you're meeting just to clarify, I was supposed to be meeting with that bird's trainer and she was legit trying to talk to me. Um, but you can probably tell from the look on my face that nothing was heard from her that day. Um, so to get us started, you know, it's sort of funny. Anytime I broach the topic of vultures, I think of my dad, who is a native North Carolinian. He grew up here. Um, and so anytime we're driving down the road um, and we see this bird, my dad will always say something to the effect of, look at that buzzard. Okay, throw it up in the chat right now. Admit it, just go ahead. Do you call these birds buzzards? Because a lot of people here in North Carolina do. It's an old term, it's kind of stuck around um, since, since you know people came here from Europe. The fact of the matter is though, that we don't have buzzards in North America. Um, we have vultures. So this is what you guys are seeing. I wanna show you a picture of a buzzard because I, I think pictures are worth a thousand words. So when you guys look on the left is the vulture, on the right is a buzzard. Looking at them, at least to me, it, it's pretty clear cut, they are not the same kind of bird 
at all. In fact, buzzards are closely related. They're, um, you know, actually in the hawk category, a beauty, their type of beauty o hawk. Um, and you can see that if you guys are familiar with red tailed hawks, you can see it's got the same kind of body. Um, it's got those kinds of feet that are good for grabbing and perching on things like limbs. Um, and it, it's got that distinct beak shape there. And then look at that vulture that has none of those things. It's, the vultures have the big chunky body. They actually have flat feet because they're more walking on the ground than they are perching in trees. They have those really unique long, and although they do have that curved hook on the end, their beaks are much longer, more suited to what they actually eat in the wild. So, you know, really I wanted to clarify, we have vultures, we do not have buzzards. There are no buzzards in North America. Now I'm just curious, Brianna, did anybody admit that they call these buzzards? Because I know somebody out there does. So no, not a them. single person fessed up to it. Oh, uh, no, you know what? I don't believe y'all, but that's fine. We'll move on. So Maybe it's not getting called out like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's fine. So let's talk about the vultures that we do have here um, in North Carolina. Now, there are actually more vultures in North America than these two I'm going to show you, but I just wanted to talk about what you guys are going to see here in our own state. So we have two kinds of vultures. The first one is our turkey vulture. Um, you know, you guys can probably guess why it's called a turkey vulture. Um, looking at that red head, the coloration of its feathers, it looks from a distance just like a wild turkey. Um, and so scientists aren't always terribly clever when they name things. And so they were like, oh, it looks like a turkey. Let's call it a turkey vulture. Um, the other vulture that we have here in North Carolina is the black vulture. Um, so, you know, when these guys are flying way up high in the sky, they are kind of hard to tell apart. But when you get much closer, if you're able to see them at this distance, they're pretty easy to tell apart because all you have to do is look at that head. Black vultures have black heads. Turkey vultures have red heads. Um, you know, one of the ways if you do see them flying up in the sky, you know, they're one of the largest silhouettes that we have flying up there right now, right? We do have a few bald eagles around and we definitely have some osprey, but, you know, more commonly, the really large thing that you see flying would be a vulture. Um, to tell the vulture apart from the other large birds is to actually look at the tip of the wings. Um, vultures are unique because they actually have flight feathers that stick out individually at the tip of their wing and it looks just like fingers. So if you look up and it looks like the end of the wing has fingers on it, that's a vulture that you're looking at. Now to actually tell the difference between a turkey and a black while they're flying, it actually has to do with their movement. So turkey vultures, when they're flying, actually move back and forth. They, I like to say they wobble. Um, and the reason I say that they wobble is because the way to remember it is that Turkeys gobble and turkey vultures wobble, wobble gobble, you with me? So when you look up and you see those fingers and then you see that up and down back and forth movement, you know it's a turkey vulture. Black vultures actually have a slightly different wing shape um, which allows them to fly more smoothly and so they're not doing that wobbling as they're flying. So that's actually a picture of one of our turkey vultures that lives at Carolina Raptor Center. Um, if you have never been to our facility, we actually have a really great trail that you can visit. We call it the Raptor Trail. We've got about 60 different birds that people can come and view up close. We've got a lot of really great signage to teach them about the birds that they're looking at. Um, that is in fact one of our turkey vultures that you would see if you come to visit us. Now, as my job, um, I probably should have told you my actual title at work is the community engagement manager. Um, typically, before the pandemic, I was going out into the community, so I would go to your meeting and get to talk to you guys face to face. Um, I do a lot of different festivals and events and things like that. And so, you know, a lot of times those events aren't suitable to bring a live bird. You don't want a wild animal in a huge crowded situation. And so for me to be able to educate, 
I have to come up with fun ways for people to relate to the birds. Um, and so I wanted to show you guys one of the fun ways that when I usually, when I used to go into the community, um, that we would have people relate is that we actually have a dress up box where we can dress people up as the bird of their choice. And so I wanted you guys to see if you're looking for any Halloween costumes, this is one of my favorite cheapest costume you can do is you can be a turkey vulture for Halloween. All you need is that feather boa and a red mask to mimic that red head. So I don't know. Now I'm upset because we aren't meeting in person. And right? I, I don't see anybody do stuff like that. I could have dressed you up like that. I don't know. Tara, you might want to think about this. This may be your Halloween costume. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. I think so. <laughs> it's a good look for anybody. I'm just saying, I think that gentleman looks excellent as a turkey vulture. All right. So moving on, um, you know, one of the reasons why we really love vultures at the Raptor Center um, is because of their unique um, position in the ecosystem. They, most people don't know, have this incredible job that is really important. Um, and the way that we like to phrase it is that vultures are nature's cleanup crew. Um, and so I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that because I think there's a lot of misconception around vultures. They kind of get a really bad rap. Um, people associate them with death. Um, they think they're really dirty. There are just a lot of bad things to be said when the reality is, if you know more about them, they're amazing and have a super important job. So let's start with this. So the reason that we call them the nature's cleanup crew is because they are decomposers. If you look at a classic food web um, of how, you know, what eats what, these guys are actually down at the bottom because they eat dead animals. So think about that for a moment. I really want you to try to envision, you know, driving to work, driving to the grocery store. Imagine if there were no vultures. Try to imagine how many unfortunate animal carcasses you would pass just, you know, going a few miles down the road. Um, and, you know, one, it's unsightly. Nobody wants to see poor dead animals lining the road. But two, there's actually a huge problem with that. Um, so if we didn't have vultures, go ahead and put it in the chat. If you already know the answer, why is it so important for us to not have dead animals laying around on the roadside? Because there's a few reasons I can think of. So if you, you have some answers, put them in the chat. You know, so again, it's not me just talking at you little kind of pop quiz time. Um, I will say one of the things that I always think of um, is that the smell would be horrific. Um, if we didn't have something to come along and clean this up, we would leave, live in a far stinkier world. Um, the bigger problem with this though, um, actually is that there are a lot of diseases that can be spread through a carcass. Um, it, it's kind of shocking, actually, because there's a huge list I could have pulled out, but I, I pulled four of my favorite things that could happen. If you leave a dead a dead carcass out there, um, you actually can introduce anthrax. A lot of people don't know that there's actual like natural anthrax out there um, that can be spread through the ecosystem through a carcass. Botulism is another one. Um, cholera is one as well as rabies. So there are a lot of really bad things out there. The cool thing about vultures is they clean that up. So the amazing thing is that their stomach acid is so strong and it has to be, but it's so strong that it actually kills off those things listed along with a whole lot of other things that aren't listed. Um, and so by the vulture eating those carcasses on the side of the road, they're actually removing those diseases, those problem bacteria from our environment. So we should give them a round of applause because that's amazing that these things are being taken out of the environment for us by these creatures. 
Um, uh, you know, another reason it's so important to have these, these decomposers is if we didn't have vultures, we would actually see an increase in other animals that would feed off of um, carcasses. And so this actually is happening in places like India, in um, South Asia. There is a problem there where their vulture population is on a serious decline. I'm talking about to the point of the vultures are almost endangered in certain areas. And in those areas where there are less vultures, they have seen an increase in the rodent population which does bring disease and destruction to humans. Um, and they've also seen a large increase in feral dogs as well, um, which also can bring disease and destruction to human habitats. Um, and so fortunately, when you do have vultures around, you don't have a problem with these um, because the vultures are actually taking away that food source that when you have less food for these creatures, then their populations can't go up. So again, nature's cleanup crew, they are phenomenal and they are super important for our environment. I'm gonna stop for a second. Anybody got any questions? This is really one of those like cricket moments where I'm like, is anybody listening? I don't know what's happening right now. I can't see you guys. I don't have the video feedback. So if you've got questions, Go ahead and put them up in the chat. Brianna can relay them to me whenever they come up. Um, so we have one. Oh, good. Okay, question. <laughs> Is it from the use of NSAID to treat the cows? When the cows dies, or no, not a question. This is a comment. Sorry. It is from the NSAID to treat the cows. Yeah. Um, when the cows die, it goes into a landfill where vultures eat it and cannot metabolize the non-toxic form. So there's actually, there's two distinct reasons for the decline of vultures on the other side of the planet. Um, it, the one is that use of a certain type of antibiotic is very common um, for cattle farmers. And it's sort of interesting. This is actually kind of a cultural thing that over there, um, when their cattle dies, instead of paying the expense of disposing of the cow's body after it, it's um, that's not going to be used. They actually just leave it out in the field and they they leave it for the vultures to take care of. But the problem is that they're using a certain antibiotic for the cattle that actually cannot be processed um, by the vultures. One of the few things in this world that vultures can't process with their really strong stomach acid. Um, and so it, it's, it poisons the vultures over time. And it, it, it we've seen a remarkable um decrease in their population because of that. We actually um, support an organization, the Peregrine Fund, who is doing a lot of heavy work over there um, to try to create legislation because there are alternatives to that certain antibiotic. There are cheap alternatives to it that they're trying to create legislation to ban the bad antibiotics um, so that the vulture population hopefully will come back. The other pop, uh, problem with the population decline actually has to do with illegal po poaching. Um, so people that are hunting things like rhinos and elephants illegally, um, they actually will put out poisoned um, carcasses to kill the vultures because the vultures will actually give away their hunting zones. Um, they'll, they'll give away those poaching spots. So the poachers will go in to kill off the vultures so that their, um, you know, kind of places that they, they hunt won't be given away. So both of those are problems. Again, we, we actually help to support the Peregrine Fund who are working on trying to help both of those issues. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you guys can become involved if you're interested um, in that, that side of um, trying to help vultures out. And the same person who shared uh, that information also shared a link if you wanna read a little bit more um, about those issues. Please do, please, please educate yourself. Um, Cause it is really important because again, if, if those vultures do die out in that part of the world, um, it, it would be catastrophic to their ecosystem. Um, and that's definitely something it's preventable. Um, and so we, we would like to help prevent that. So please, please do go to that website. Thank you, whoever just shared that link. Um, um, we have another question. Sure. Um, 
someone asked, what do the vultures do with the fur? So when, um, do they just leave the fur of the animals? How do they process it? So for the, you know, it's funny because working with raptors, most raptors cannot digest bones or fur and they'll cough it back up in pellet form. Um, vulture stomach acid is actually strong enough that it can digest pretty much anything that goes in there, including bones and fur. Um, so it doesn't mean that they will eat the whole carcass because they're always gonna go for the yummy inside portions first. Um, and get their fill of that before they move on. So you, you'd have to have a, a pretty big group of vultures for it to entirely decimate the, the carcass. But yeah, their stomach acid is no joke. It literally will strip paint off a car. Um, and so that they can work their way through pretty much anything that they put in their mouth. So, so does that mean, unlike, I guess, owls, this is my question. Um, so they wouldn't produce pellets? They don't produce pellets the same way? Correct. Correct. Okay. Owls have those lovely pellets that we get to dissect and poke apart, and vultures just have no need for that. Because um, it's awesome. It's like their superpower, really, if you want to think of it that way. And one more question. This one's from Tara. Um, compared to some of the smaller birds, are the vultures easy to work with? Oh, yes. Um, they are, and I'm actually going to talk about vulture intelligence in just a little bit, and it has to do with how smart they are, um, is why they're easier to work with than, than other birds out there. So, uh, Tara, we'll get to that momentarily. Cool. <laughs> so looking at this picture, this is another bird. I wanted you guys to get a sense, um, of, you know, kind of what we have to offer at the Raptor Center. This is a really one of our most popular birds out on the trail. This is our king vulture. Um, her name is Fishi, and she's just, you know, to me, she looks like a Disney character. Um, you guys can probably guess she is not a native bird to this area. She is, in fact, from South America. Um, and she, she's a fan favorite um, because she just she's a really curious animal. Um, and she just she really likes to explore the world around her. So one of the things that we do to help educate when we go off site and do events because we can't take her with us um, is we actually created this really fun activity um, of a king vulture that highlights stomach acid, which is what we just talked about. And so if you look really closely, there's that clear tube that runs down to the stomach. What we do is we actually give kids bones, <coughs> baking soda, um, and they get to feed the vulture and then they get to watch the bones disappear in the stomach acid, which is vinegar. But it's just a fun way for us to illustrate when we go out into the community, um, you know, just kind of how cool vultures are with their stomach acid. All right. So. Let's get to that intelligence thing, because I think this is probably one of the facts that shocks most people. They have no idea how smart vultures are. Um, so there were some studies done, and these are incredibly intelligent creatures because they have problem solving um, and skills and, you know, they can work through logic, um, which is kind of unusual for a lot of animals. And so in, in a certain paper, it was equated that they actually have the intelligence equivalent to a four-year-old human child, um, which is incredible if you think about that. So I wanted to kind of show you guys some examples of how intelligent they are um, that, that are based around them being problem solvers. So Tara, you know, it's actually funny you asked about working with the birds. Um, for the trainers, they love working with the vultures because there are so many things we can do with them in training that we just can't do with other birds. Um, I know that everybody loves owls. And if you know me well, you know that owl is my absolute favorite bird on the trail. But the fact is, when it comes to intelligence, owls are really good at being owls, um, at hunting and making babies, and that's about it. Um, and so to be able to work with a bird that can solve problems, it, it's a joy for our staff. So one of the things that we like to do with our vultures is we've actually taught them how to paint. 
So when we do training with our birds, we're very careful with the activities that we do with them because we always want to make sure that we are working off their natural behaviors that they would exhibit in the wild. We would never force our animals to do anything outside of their normal scope of behaviors. Fortunately for us, believe it or not, painting does fall into this category. Um, and I want, I want to show this to you. So, you know, we already talked about what they eat. They eat carcasses. Carcasses are on the ground. So these are birds that you primarily find walking around on the ground. They actually have these really fantastic flat feet that are very suited for walking on the ground. So hopefully, everybody cross your fingers, let's hope this works. I wanted to show you this video of McKenna working with one of our black vultures. And, you know, this video makes it look so easy, but I will tell you, um, it, you know, it took a little time for McKenna to work with her vulture, but really all she had to do was she just had to get the vulture used to the idea of stepping on that plate of paint and then stepping on a canvas um, to make these really fantastic creations. So remember I talked about earlier that, you know, we support the Peregrine Fund, which in turn support organizations that help vulture populations around the world. So we take these paintings that our vultures created and we sell them in our gift shop. And all the proceeds from these vulture paintings actually go directly to the Peregrine Fund. It's one of the ways that we um, support vulture conservation in the world. Um, another thing that we do that's really fun with them, this one blows my mind, y'all. We just started doing this last year, and when the trainer came up with this, I was like, what is happening? I didn't even know this was possible. Um, she actually taught the vultures to choose colors. So I don't know that the um, audio is working in this very well, but just know that through this video, she's actually calling out colors. Um, so right then she said green, and then she said red, um, and so the vulture will actually go to the correct color. Um, this one was kind of a, a fun one. So, you know, she just started out, this was a, an early video because it only has two, um, but she has expanded it now that the vulture has four color choices. Um, which is even more impressive that she calls out a, and, and it goes to it every single time, um, which, you know, kind of lends to that intelligence factor that that they can pick out different colors. Um, so that that was kind of a fun new new thing that we've been doing um, fairly recently that we get to show off to show off their intelligence. Um, any questions at this point about this kind of thing? Because this is always kind of a fun get to see the trainers working with the birds. So when she um, when she does this, does she put the colors in different spots she to know what they're really picking? She does. She does. So it, it's not a memory thing that the red is always on the right and the green is on the left. Um, she does mix them up. One of the things that actually she she told me one day was really funny that we actually have a couple of vultures that she trained to do this. Um, and it's funny, people don't really consider that these birds have their own unique personality, but it, that really came into play when she started doing this training because we have a certain vulture we learned that hates the color orange and, and will not go to the orange plate ever. I don't care what the jackpot reward is, the bird's like, I'm not touching orange. It's not a thing. But the other vulture has no problem with it. So we actually um, have to, it depends on which bird we're using as to which colors we pull out for the day, which I think it's hysterical that, you know, the birds even have color preferences. I don't know, it's not something I, I had ever really considered of until we started doing this. Um, someone else was wondering, what are the treats that she's feeding the vultures? Oh, we like to call them Mises Pieces at our facility, not to gross anybody out. <laughs> Um, mainly they get a fed a diet of mice and rats. They also get things like chicks and squirrels and quail and, um, they, you know, a, a huge variety that mimics what they would get in the wild. Um, fish they actually enjoy as well. Um, but of course all of it is, um, you know, 
no longer living and it's been it's been frozen and then thawed out for these animals. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was in the video, if you were looking really closely. One of the cool things about training vultures is how you actually give the food to the animal. Um, and for them, what the trainers do is they actually they put their um, hand into a circular fist and they put the food inside. And what that does, it allows the bird to stick their beak into that cavity of their hand to get the food. And that actually mimics them, um, you know, putting their head into a carcass to eat. Um, and so we only do that for the vultures because that's what they do in the wild. And they really enjoy that behavior of um, putting their beak into a cavity to pull a treat out. So that, that's kind of a fun thing. If you ever come out to our facility and we're doing a demonstration with the vultures, take a look for that. Look for the trainers using that unique way to give the food to the birds. Because it is a little bit different than you would for the other birds. All right. Um, still talking about intelligence. Um, you know, one argument for intelligence is the ability to socialize. And these are incredibly social birds. Um, it, it's rare to see one by itself because really if you look around, there's going to be a few others lurking somewhere near the area. Um, in fact, they prefer to be in very large groups. Just down the road from my house here in Huntersville, we've got a roost that has a, well over 100 birds um, that are there all the time. Um, you know, out in the Northwest, vultures actually do migrate um, thousands of miles down to Central America. And those flocks can actually be tens of thousands of vultures at the same time, um, which is pretty cool. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to teach you the correct names of groups of vultures. And the reason I wanted to do that is because they actually have three different names and it depends on what the situation is as to what term you would use. Um, so, you know, just kind of prep you, for instance, a group of owls would be a parliament of owls, right? Um, a group of crows, do you guys want to put it in the chat? What do you call a group of crows? Does anybody know? Brianna, Tara, do you guys know? Tara got it. A Yay, murder. murder of crows, right? Murder. Put <laughs> that on because that, that was pretty funny. So we're gonna we're gonna learn some vulture terms because they also have some slightly amusing terms as well. Um, so if you see a group of vultures hanging out, right? They're not really doing anything. They're just sitting on the roof of a house. They're sitting on a power line. They're on the ground together. We call that a committee. So it's a committee of vultures. Um, if they are a big group circling in the sky, uh, we actually call that a kettle. And I believe the reason that it's called a kettle is because when you get a large enough group, it kind of looks like the way that steam from a kettle would move around. And so somebody along the way thought that that's what it looked like. Um, I do feel like at this point, I probably should clarify an old wives tale that when you see vultures circling, that does not indicate that there is a dead animal nearby. Um, that's actually a myth. Really what they're doing is they have caught an air thermal, which is warm air um, that makes a circular motion. And so these birds really like to glide, especially in thermals. And so when you see them doing that big sweeping circular motion, it's only because they've caught an air thermal. It's not because there's a dead animal nearby. So just let y'all know. Now we know. Um, and last but not least, this is this is the term that always amuses me. If a group of vultures are hanging out and eating a dead carcass, we call that a wake, <laughs> which makes me laugh every time. Sorry. Hopefully y'all find it as funny as I do. But those are the three terms that we would actually use in describing groups of vultures, and it all depends on the action that they're taking at the time. All right, so we're gonna move on. The picture you chose um, to describe that was all the black vultures too. Yes. It's like they're all dressed in black at the wake. Yes, all vultures would be termed these particular terms. So usually when I talk about them being social and being in large groups, um, normally people have questions. They want to know about the babies and the nesting. So I thought I'd cover that real quick with you guys. Um, 
So for vultures, it's kind of interesting because they don't build a typical bird nest that you think of up in a tree. Um, really, they just utilize whatever handy spot is around on the ground. Um, they've been known to actually lay eggs on pallets and pieces of plastic, um, whatever's handy that just has a slight indentation in it. Um, so you can see one of our turkey vultures there is just got a slight little dip in the ground. That's her nest. Um, you know, they lay just two or three eggs once a year and not, not a huge clutch for them. But when those eggs hatch, you get these guys. Um, so think back to my happy picture. I had one of those sitting on my desk, which made me hysterically laugh and not focus on anything. Um, so the way to tell a baby turkey vulture apart from a baby black vulture is by the color of their down feathers. So you can see here that they have these nice white feathers with that black face. Black vultures actually have a tan kind of buff color feathers. So white for turkey, buff for black. Either way, they're ridiculously ugly cute. Um, can't help but love them. All right, any questions up to this point? Because we're about to hit this segment that if you are eating dinner, you may want to put that to the side because we're going to hit some gross stuff, which I always have to talk about because I don't, it's just the cool stuff about vultures. They do really gross things. So hopefully you've all put your food aside. Let's talk about their amazing adaptations that they have that just happen to be a little bit gross. So when I talk about this, I always think of this. Somebody sent me this cartoon one time um, that I just can't stop laughing every time I see it. So the cartoon goes, I'm a turkey vulture. Yes, indeed. My head is bare to prevent rotting flesh from adhering to it. To keep cool, I poop on my legs and feet. My main defense is projectile vomiting. I'm so awesome. <laughs> Literally everything you need to know about a vulture right there in one comic strip. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Um, so these are the things that we're about to talk about. So again, I just pre-warned you, put your food aside because this is pretty gross. So first for you did have a question about um, nesting. So when they when they nest, how long do will they sit on the nest on the ground? Sure. Um, for, well, for both vultures, I think the average is between 30 to 40 days. Um, you know, um, I actually can't remember out of the two, which one has a slightly longer period, but it's only by a few days. It's not a huge thing. So, you know, 30 to 40 days, um, is kind of the average for those guys. Um, and are there any, uh, predators that they have to worry about during that time? Yes. Um, but fortunately, remember, we've got a huge population. Lots of these birds are laying eggs everywhere. So, you know, it's one of their their ways of procreating um, is to take into account that they will have some that will get eaten along the way. Things like snakes, raccoons, possums, anything that's going to eat eggs um, will go after these vulture eggs. So yes. for the adult vultures. Are oh, for the adult vultures. On the nest, are they concerned at all, I guess, about like coyotes or foxes? So, you know, fortunately for these guys, they, they do have pretty, you know, strong wing beats. And so they, if they see something coming, they definitely can fly to get away. Um, but they do have to be concerned about the larger mammals like raccoons um, would be probably their primary concern out of anything else. Foxes would be one. Um, but yeah, fortunately, they're big enough that most things won't go after them. Um, because even though they they don't have the super strong feet, they do have talons. They are able to defend themselves, um, not as well as like a hawk or an eagle, but they, they do have the capability of defense. So good question though. All right, any other questions? Let's talk about this retractable hood. This is actually kind of cool. How many, of how many are hit by vehicles? We're actually going to talk about that in just a little bit. Because that's okay. a huge thing that people can actually help us with is that particular problem. So we're going to talk about that more towards the end of our program. Anything else? I think that was it for now. Okay, cool.
Um, so this is kind of a cool, cool fact a lot of people don't know, um, is that these birds actually do have what we call retractable hoods. Um, so if you look on the right, um, this is normally what you guys would see presented to you as you drive by them on the side of the road when they're eating because it's an adaptation to keep them clean. When they're sticking their head into the body of a dead animal, there's a lot of icky things that are going to get stuck to them. And by not having any feathers on their head, um, there's it's harder for that icky stuff to get stuck to their head. But when they're not out there eating and they've got their head stuck into something really gross, um, then they're able to pull that, that hood up to help keep them warm because they don't have feathers on their head and in the winter time that can be chilly. So one of the fun things, if you come to our raptor trail, we actually have two black vultures in the same home. Um, and it just happens that their preference, one of the vultures likes to keep her hood up all the time and the other vulture likes to keep her hood down. And so it's actually, when you come, you can see in person the up and down, up versus down while you're there, which I think is kind of a, a funny thing. Um, another thing, if you look closely on the left picture, the one with the hood up, you can see they actually have nostrils in their beak that allows you to see straight through. So that is it. That's an accurate picture. You're looking at the sky through that hole. Um, that's actually another really great adaptation because when they are sticking their head into icky, gross things and they pull their head up, if they have anything stuck to their beak, then they can do a really forceful snort um, to clear those nostrils very easily. And so that's why they have that really unique shape um, that you don't see in other raptors. So now, Alder, in terms of the hood, how do they go about pulling that up? Is it muscles in their neck yep. or? It's just, yep, it's just a muscle. It's kind of, I always tell kids it's like a convertible in a car. You push a button and it just slowly comes up or down. Um, but yeah, just muscle control. That allows it to go up and down. Can you guys see, can you envision yourself as a turkey vulture for Halloween? Because just saying, y'all, it's a pretty cool <laughs> outfit. All right, another awesome awesome gross adaptation is that these birds practice urohydrosis um, and that is a fancy way to say they pee on their legs it's a thing um so one thing to look for at at our facility we actually have four different species of vultures on our trail and i like to tell people to pay close attention to the leg color um, because it looks like they all have the same leg color when in reality they don't. Um, it only looks that way because they all practice urohydrosis. The reason that they pee on their own legs, there's actually two reasons. One, um, again, it, it all ties back to what they eat. They eat the dead carcass um, and to help keep them clean because that does get stuck to their legs. Remember I said that stomach acid is so strong that their urine coming out is incredibly strong on the pH scale. So by them peeing on their legs, it actually helps to kill the bacteria that is on their legs. Um, the other reason they do it is because these guys don't have sweat glands like we do. Um, so to help cool them off uh, by peeing on their legs, that actually helps to cool them down. So. Super fun fact, I bet you were not expecting to learn that tonight. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, we're gonna move on to my favorite vulture fact is one of the best defenses on the planet is that if you scare them, they will vomit towards you. Now stop and think about that for just one moment. Think about what they eat. Think about what that smell would be like after it's been digested and then comes back out. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the perfect defense mechanism because anytime one of these birds vomits near me, I have to walk away. There's no way I can stand there with that around. Um, so the reason I have this picture is if you look really close, um, this baby had just recently eaten um, and so it, it's kind of looking at the camera because it's trying to decide, am I going to swallow the stuff in my crop or am I going to let it come back up 
because this person with the camera is bothering me right now. Um, so it's one, one of my favorite pictures actually, because I don't know the ending to that story. And I always wish I did know. Um, my bet would actually be on that it came back up um, because that's what they do. So again, it comes back to one of the ways that um, I like to educate people is by doing activities. So cool thing about vultures is they actually uh, coexist with this bird in the Southwest. That is another raptor. It's called a caracara. Um, I do wish we had them here, but we do not. Um, so caracaras are actually really clever in their own right because they figured out um, that they are willing to scare vultures. Do you guys want to go in the chat section and take a moment and tell me why you think they would purposely scare a vulture? Because it's really gross. It's just, it's even grosser than the vulture just projectile vomiting. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> free meal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> think about it, y'all. That's nutrition served right up to you, and you don't have to do anything. It's genius. So the caracara will scare the vulture, the vulture will vomit, fly away, and then the caracara has got this fabulous meal full of nutrition right there in front of it. Um, so to demonstrate that with the community, we actually came up with a really fun activity we call the Vomit Toss, where the participants get to be vultures. We give them vomit, um, which is actually glue slime, but whatever, vomit. Um, and we let them toss the vomit into a bucket uh, in front of our care care pictures that you can see on the backdrop there. So this is one of the ways that we're able to educate everybody without actually having the birds right there in front of us. Um, I will say that is actually hands down my favorite activity that we do. The vomit toss is hysterical. Um, and if you ever see me out in the community with it, I highly recommend that you play. No matter what you're doing, stop and play. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how you guys can actually help vultures. Um, I will say that here in North America, particularly here in North Carolina, our populations are actually fantastic, um, which is really great. And so they're not on any threatened or endangered list. Um, you know, it's, it's not a huge concern. We're actually more concerned with the populations, like I talked about earlier, that are overseas um, in, in Asia and parts of Africa as well. Um, so one of the things you can do is simply supporting organizations like the Carolina Raptor Center, as well as the Peregrine Fund, um, because we um, you know, are putting money towards these conservation efforts that will help relieve these problems for these birds. Um, you guys probably know that the Raptor Center, we actually have one of the largest raptor rehabilitation hospitals in the United States. Uh, we care for over a thousand birds every year. And, you know, somebody mentioned earlier about um, the cars hitting vultures. That's actually the easiest fix if we could just get everybody on board. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a connect the dot situation that not everybody knows how to connect the dots. I'm just going to explain it to you really quickly. I bet a lot of you already know this. Um, but, you know, the reality is that there are still a lot of people out there that are throwing trash out their car windows. And although the trash doesn't actually attract raptors, um, it does attract other animals that raptors do eat. It also attracts other wildlife like possums and raccoons and, you know, rats, mice, all kinds of things. And so for our raptors, what happens is when an animal comes to eat that trash, the raptor will spot that animal um, and go for it. The problem is raptors don't have periphery vision. And so when they make that dive to catch their prey, they don't see cars coming. Um, for the vultures, you know, if there are carcasses on the side of the road that are there mainly because of the trash, the vultures are way too close to the cars that are just zooming by and not paying attention and the birds get hit by the car. Honestly, all of this would just be fixed if people would simply keep their trash inside of their car um, and dispose of it appropriately at the gas station, at your house, um, putting it in an appropriate trash receptacle. Um, it's such an easy, easy thing. And if we could get more people on board doing it, 
we would have less patients at our facility, which is actually our end goal, believe it or not. We would rather have less birds um, coming in that are injured. So that is another way that you guys can actually help vultures. Um, you guys missed it. In September, we always hold International Vulture Awareness Day. It is all day, nothing but vulture stuff on our raptor trail. It's always a good time. You can kind of see some of the things that we had, not from this year, COVID, but from last year, what it would typically look like. Um, another thing, you can visit events that we host. So I mentioned really early on in this call as everybody was getting on, we host a monthly homeschool day. Um, we have different themes every month. It just happens that for October, the science of all things icky is our topic. Um, and so vultures will be heavily relayed um, information in this particular event. So if you know anybody out there that has kids um, that, and they don't have to be homeschooled because at this point, everybody in Mecklenburg County is homeschooled. Um, but if they're interested in getting out of their house to learn, then we provided a, a safe place for people to be outside and continue their education um, on things like vultures and raptors. Um, we also have the option, everybody can become a transport volunteer. Uh, one side note about that is because of COVID, I have suspended that program for the time being, but I am probably gonna reopen early in 2021 if everything starts to go well. Um, but simply if you visit our website, check out our volunteer section, you can learn more about our volunteer programs. The reason I mentioned transport volunteers for this particular talk um, is because they are the people that actually, when we get the calls about injured birds, they go out to the community to get those injured birds and they bring them to us for us to treat. Um, if you're into volunteering, I promise you, it is the most unique volunteering experience you will ever do in your life um some pretty pretty hilarious stories that come out of um you know trying to trying to capture some injured birds and bringing them in um so that is an option to help vultures as well so that is it y'all that is my talk that's my all things vultures for the evening now is the time if you have any burning questions go ahead and put those in chat I'm going to see if I can figure out how to stop sharing my screen so I can actually see your faces. Um, Brianna, how did I do? Did I stop sharing? Can you just see me? Yeah, you stopped sharing. Perfect. Well, that went Are well. you able to see the chat or do uh, you still want me to read messages or questions to you? you? You know what? If you'll just call them out to me, it's probably okay. just easier. <laughs> right now, I just have one. Um, do vultures only eat carrion? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so the majority, the very, very large majority of their diet is carrion. Um, they have actually been known to catch smaller things like frogs or even fish once in a while. Um, but it's not something they prefer to do because let's be honest, I think I could be a vulture in maybe my next life because I would rather have my food just laying there waiting for me than to have to actually go hunt it down and catch it. So um, yeah, they, they can catch and eat other things, but why go to the trouble? Let's be honest, there's pretty, you know, enough dead animals out there to, to feed everybody. Good question. That actually, you know, it kind of kind of rolls into like one a really cool fact about vultures that kind of boggles my mind in a way, and nobody's been able really to explain it to me. Um, so black vultures have a terrible sense of smell, right? Which makes sense because if you're sticking your head into a dead carcass, you don't want to smell that. In my head, great, good job, nature. That's the way I would design it if I were designing it. Turkey vultures, however actually have a really fantastic sense of smell. Um, and that's the thing that boggles my mind that I've yet to figure out. Um, it is useful because they can actually detect a dead carcass from over a mile away. Um, but at the same time, just when you think about the logistics of what they eat, I, I don't understand. I feel like nature failed them. Um, but the cool thing is going back to the intelligence is that black vultures will often watch turkey vultures and follow them to the dead carcasses because they know turkey vultures are a reliable source to get to their food of choice. So kind of a cool, cool thing. So that is it. Any other questions? Um, 
just a very interesting and fun presentation as well as a great ongoing rehab program. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you for that. We, um, yeah, we, you know, the people that work at CRC and volunteer as well are really passionate about the cause. Um, it's a great place to be. I feel really good about the work that we do um, with wildlife conservation. And so um, if you don't know much about us, check us out. Our uh, website's carolinaraptorcenter.org. There's a lot of different information um, about the birds, about conservation, about what we're doing. Um, and if you've never come to our facility, come visit. It's a, it's a pretty unique thing to get um, up close to that many birds in one place. So, well, cool. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Um, if you have any questions, because the way it works for me is I get off of these meetings and then I'm like, oh, I have all these things I wanted to know. Feel free to email myself or Brianna. Um, you can actually find my email on our website pretty easily. Um, but just reach out to us, um, tag us on social media and let us know your questions. And we're happy to answer them if you think about them later tonight or down the road in the future. So thank you. Thanks for coming out tonight, you guys. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you so much. That was an amazing presentation. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a good evening. And Miss Vicki Matlock wanted to say thank you very much for the presentation. Oh, did she? Did oh, all I think she did. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Vicki, I waited too late. <laughs> but I'll send her an email. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Good night.